Pat yourself on the back because you are right here, right now, for a reason. Welcome to the On Purpose Podcast, where together we will empower ourselves and others to live lives with more passion and purpose. How are you doing this morning, Jared? I feel good. I feel good, man. Not fantastic today. I just feel good. Um, where are we at in life? Taya's first day of her senior year of high school was yesterday. So I took some time off from the gym to really enjoy that with her. And even though it's not like anything we thought she would have, it's still a last moment, you know. What is it? Is she going to school or Straight online? virtual. Okay. Yeah, straight virtual. So we'll see what happens with that. But, uh, yeah, dude, I took the night off from the gym. We went and got real bad Chinese food to celebrate. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, from where? Uh, Lulu Bistro. Oh, yeah, that street. place is good. I mean, it's fun for us because we don't hardly ever eat it, but to have the old takeout things to say, like, thank you on the top all over yeah. the table, and it was just fun. And then, you know, went and got a little bit of supplies that she needs and just really try to enjoy the last last for us. Right? Yeah. She's our baby, so she is literally the last one that will go through this. So everything she does is the last time we we get to do this with one of our kids. Yeah. So how are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Had a good week last week, good weekend. Saw a, a teammate and close friend, Michael Stack, get engaged. Saw him propose there at his baby shower. That was cool. Almost killed uh, my dog. <laughs> that was scary. We were testing out a, a basket on my new bike that I got, and she jumped out of the front. I did not think in 100 years she would do that, but sh- she did. And it was a scary moment, and it really allowed me to reflect on how much love and joy that little being brings me every day. You know, I was like, oh, my God, I could not imagine if something happened to you. Was Courtney with you when it happened? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was right in front of me. We both stopped and were, like, you know, expecting her to be hurt, but no, nope, just popped right up. She was good. So that was that was the highlight. Got a new bike. Almost killed my dog with the bike. And, <laughs> and uh yeah, and it's actually Courtney's dog. So I I have recently adopted the dog, so I consider it mine as well now. But yeah, it's uh, it was a scary thing. It was yeah. a scary. Well, I'm thing. glad it all turned out well. Um, I gotta tell you, though, I'm not the biggest fan of your bike with a basket on the front of it. No, <laughs> no. Well, it just wasn't what I was expecting when you said you bought a bike. So I was, I was reading it and I looked at the pictures. Like you got a basket on the front of your bike. I, I mounted it. I mounted it. <laughs> Didn't come with it. But that's funny. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how long the basket lasts because I'm a little traumatized because of that. Yeah, you might have you to know? get rid of it. Do you have a buzzer or a bell to let people know you're coming up on them? Good question. I don't think so. You got a flag or anything? So I don't no, ask. I no. just bark. <laughs> Coming. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, man. Um, I haven't ridden a bike in so long. It's fun. It, it is, man. Honestly, my ass hurts after I ride them for a while. Yeah, you got to get a good seat. I don't know. What's a good seat, though? A little padding, man. It's a little uh, padding. I bought those shorts one time when we had bikes. Those shorts that oh, had yeah. the pad, and that didn't help either. Oh, really? Yeah, I just don't think I'm meant to ride bikes that much. Oh. Teach I don't know. Own. But we do have a funny bike store. I remember when we were getting ready to downsize our house, <laughs> and uh, Andrew will probably hate that this is on the podcast, but we were downsizing houses, and Andrea, when she gets on something, like she goes. Well, she was on getting rid of stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, Taya comes home from school, drops her backpack down and stuff, and we she could just walk right up the hill from the school and uh, runs in. She's like, all right, guys, I'll see you later. I'm going to go ride my bike with so-and-so. Runs out to the garage, and she's like, looks around, comes running back in the house. She's like, hey, where's my bike? And Andrea's like, oh. Mm. I sold them all. <laughs> <laughs> she sold all our bikes. And... Uh, Taya never lets her live that down. We probably hear that story at the house at least like once a month. Oh, she's like, Mom, funny. remember when I came home and you sold my bike? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I've been enjoying it. I've never been much of a, a big biker either, but Courtney's really been pushing for it to where I was finally like, all right, I'll get a bike. Yeah, I'll we, get a bike. Andrew and I have talked about getting new ones for traveling just because you can explore a little faster than just walking everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, if you jog everywhere, you're kind of creepy when you show up sweaty all the time. Right. So, <laughs> so yeah, maybe we'll explore bikes. Yeah. What do you think of uh, reflecting on what good can come from all this hate? 
Oh, it was what good. I, I got to put it into practice like a couple <laughs> days after we, we recorded that. But I think the good that can come from it, man, is is lessons. It's just more lessons of how to be with each other. You know, one of the greatest gifts that we can give each other is is the gift of listening. And I think that the more hateful arguments we get in, hopefully the more tired we're going to grow from them. And eventually people will just listen. We'll just listen to what the other person has to say and share opinions and stuff without having to engage in hate and eventually just try and spread love. Like we always come back to that. We've always come back to that in history, love and compassion. And that's what I'm hoping is the good that can come from all this hate. What yeah. about you? No, I agree. It's funny you said that. Cause I was at the same point where, um, the word, the, the, image I had and the words that just kept coming to mind were listening and love mm. because you can't out hate hate mm-hmm. like I can't hate more than you hate you know what I mean like that's a that's a lose lose battle it always perpetuates and the only way you stop hate is by listening and finding love so I, I agree with you on that and uh I don't think we're there yet it doesn't seem like but I think if all of us as individuals just choose that path no matter what other people are trying to lead or what information they're trying to steer you towards, we can start getting to that healing process. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I shared a a fun Facebook post uh, last week after this episode saying that I have love for Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Oh gosh. How that, how was that received? It was, it was interesting. There was definitely, there was still some, some arguments that happened uh, in my comment thread, not even between me and that went off topic, but People were asking questions and that's what I wanted. You know, of course there was some sarcasm of some people being like, what, what could you possibly love about Joe Biden? And what could you possibly love? And I got to share my perspective of like, look, like we can, we can have love for people or love for each other without liking them, without having to agree with them, without even ever having to engage with them. Right. you, You can, you can have love towards a person or towards any being. You can be a loving and compassionate being without having to have any like agreement or interaction with that person. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that's what I want to challenge and encourage others to do, right? Like if if you say that you hate someone, like I hate Donald Trump or I hate Joe Biden, or even if you really dislike someone, challenge yourself and try to take a moment and just send them some love. Right, send them some love telepathically in your mind. Be like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a moment of love for this person. See how that feels. It feels better than hating. So that's kind of what I was trying to put out there, and <laughs> it was kind of received, you know, one day at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, uh, I, I think we have a misconception that for me to love you or to even strongly like you means I should never disagree with you or that I got to, you got to be everything I want. You got to believe everything I believe. And and that's one, that's boring. And two, it's pretty arrogant to think that another human being with their own experiences has to see everything your way in order to have a relationship. And I think sometimes we lose sight of that. For sure. You know, so I don't know. I, I, um, I'm excited to talk about today. Episode 78? Yeah. What? Whoa. That's Very a long cool. run, man. What are we... We'll be coming up on a... Uh, gosh, we're over a year and a half into this now, every week, showing yep. up. So thank you guys for joining us every week to listen to our thoughts and hear from our guests and uh, just share some of your time and your space with us. We do love you all, and we appreciate you giving us that opportunity. So, Ollie, Amen. where are we at for today? Win the day, win your life. Episode 78, win the day, win your life. And, yeah, Jared, I think me included, a lot of us sometimes have this gargantuan idea or picture of what we need to do. We need to save the world. We need to, we need to end racism. We need to end whatever war is going on today. We need to cure this virus. And we have all these big goals, but it really comes back down to – the gift of, of a new day that we have each day. And today I wanted us to reflect on how can, what is it that we need to do each day to ensure that we are winning the day? In my journey lately, 
I've been experimenting that a lot more. And I wanted to have this discussion with Dude, you. Dude, every time you tell me you're experimenting, I get <laughs> nervous. <laughs> well, I'm like, what do you experiment with now? Well, you're going to be staying nervous, my <laughs> friend, because I'm always experimenting. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah so I, I'm really curious to to dive into this with yeah. you. And, and I wanted to ask, because I know that you've you've been on both sides of the spectrum of yeah. being extremely organized, having, you know, from your, your full day, every hour blocked out, knowing yeah. exactly yeah. what you're going to do, ha- having different careers, really different lives. You know, you've, you've lived different lives. Dude, it's time. funny you say that because we're preparing for more changes and yeah. we're going through boxes yesterday. And I was literally reading, I forgot I had this stuff, but it was from my military time. It was some awards and some pictures. And the, yeah, it, it literally feels like a whole different person lived that life. I bet. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I, I've been both places. And so I, I don't know that we're going to agree on this today, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Because where I'm at now, I, I've really got a different view on what it means for me to win a day than it would have if you'd asked me this 10 years ago. Of course, yeah. Well, that's that's what I'm curious to know is right now, today, Yeah. how do you know that you won the day? Man, that, that's... Uh, so I, to prepare for this, I was thinking and, and doing some writing. And for me, I really changed like before winning the day would have been very task oriented very did i get stuff done do i have to do it again is it completely off my or now like i don't you know if i get up and see the sunrise if i can listen to music at some point in the day if i can read move my body enrich somebody else and see a sunset that's a win that's literally all I have on my list, because I I, was, I knew like you would probably have a detailed list, and because you're you're on in a different phase of life, and I was just thinking like, how do I know when I win? Like, how do I go to bed happy? Mm-hmm. I'd be like, ah, oh, that was a good day, and that's literally all I have to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have list around my computer anymore. I looked at my calendar, and there's literally nothing on the day, because I, I realized at least where I'm at now, that's getting all that stuff done. If I had an actual to-do list, doesn't let me sleep better at night. It doesn't fill my heart. Mm. What about you? So mine changes with what my short-term goals were. Just a few months ago when I was preparing for my fight, how I won the day looked very different Mm -hmm. than when I'm not preparing for a fight. Right. But for, for right now, one of my biggest focuses is increasing my spirituality practice as well as of course my business. So I have my, my be your best daily journal from, from B nails. And I put about five, what I call power list tasks. I got that from Andy Frisella. Yeah. Um, power list tasks of five things that I got to do to win the day. And one of them will be at least 10 minutes of meditation, 20 minutes of yoga with Courtney. Cause I find that doing both of those, it really does just like center yeah. my day. Um, and then the other three or, and then there's one, I, I like to do at least 12. I have 12 little check boxes and I'll, and I'll work with timers. 12, uh, 12 sessions of 20 minutes of straight focus on um, whatever tasks I have on on my business to-do list. And then the other two are interchangeable. It's usually something fitness, moving my body. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is is interchangeable. Sometimes it'll be an act of kindness, a dad grat interview, some, you know, (laughs) something like that, or, or just another task. But yeah, typically I put five things on there and Lately, I really feel like I've won the day if I've gotten my work done, a workout, meditation, and a little bit of yoga. That's that's where I'm at today, but it definitely changes over time. But I think that's important um, in, in the stuff that you have on that list because I think some people maybe hear the 
hear the words to-do list or a power list and they think it has to be tasks that are done every day. And, and I used to do that. I, you know, Like you were saying, I used to have every hour blocked because I, I worked for a guy that had access to our calendars and he only viewed you as productive if, if you looked busy. It didn't matter if you actually produced anything. And I, I think that's kind of a fallacy people fall into mm-hmm. with the whole grind culture and the hustle culture that I think we're moving past now. I think one of the one of the things that's going to come out of all the chaos currently going on on the backside when we do progress out of it is that people are going to realize that whole hustle grind culture be busy 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 wasn't really fulfilling mm-hmm. for a lot of people. Yeah. And, and in the end you question what what it was all worth, right? Because you had all these hours away from your family and your friends and you missed all this and that and, and really what was it worth? Was it worth the sacrifice. I think a lot of people are going to prioritize more of what we're talking about here and that self-reflection, the meditation, the quality over the quantity. And if you remember back to the very beginning of this year, um, I forget which episode it was, but one of my goals for the whole year was to slow myself down and to create stillness. And I, and I think your to-do list or your power list kind of reflects your habits, honestly. If, if you look at it and really self-assess, which we've always talked about, right? Self-assess, know who you are. If you don't have the habits to get stuff done, if you're lazy by nature, if you're a procrastinator by nature, your to-do list probably needs more tasks for a while. But for, for where I'm at in life, like I don't have a problem getting things done. I have a problem slowing down and enjoying them. Mm-hmm. So my how to win a day reflects more on did I slow down and enjoy my day and enjoy the moments Mm -hmm. or was I trying to get through to the next thing? And I think it's okay to change. Definitely. Yeah, I I have completely fallen victim to the, the grind culture, the hustle culture, you know, just a year in after I graduated college and I was in the oil and gas industry, I felt that I couldn't, even though I was working on my office hours, that I couldn't get enough work done. You know, I went to the doctor, got prescribed ADHD medicine because I couldn't focus more and then worked more hours and then still felt like that wasn't enough and it wasn't ever enough. Right. You know, to where fast forward to today as being a business owner now for a little over five years, I'm barely trying to have more of a work-life balance and kind of work less. You know, those 12, 20 minute focus timers that only amounts to four hours, but you'd be surprised in an eight hour day, how difficult it can be to get that of 12, 20 minute sessions of straight focus. And I feel that on the days that I do, um, hit that, which is, which is most days that that is, a, that's a, a good amount of work. Sure. You know what I mean? To, to four hours of straight focus time total cumulatively, but you'd also be surprised how quickly the day can, can get like stuff like this doesn't count towards that time. You know, it's, it's mainly of me working on a specific task on like my, my B nails task list, but it is, I think that this hustle, this grind culture, you said it, that we have this pressure to be at least looking or feeling like we're busy. And most of the time that busyness isn't some of the most valuable contributions that we can be making. No, I, I, <clears throat> and I would even add to that. I think the business is a detriment to your life. And it's a, a lot of times a detriment to your health and your relationships because by just keeping busy, <laughs> you're missing a lot of other things. And, and I, I do think that people are, are looking more at where is their time going. And if we know our time is short and we all know we're going to leave, right? You don't get to, this is a one-way ticket life. What do you really want to be doing? And where do you really want to be spending your day? So that's kind of my sunrise music movement, watching a sunset. That to me, those are all important. And, and one of the way, things I like to do in a, you know, I'm reading a book called When Things Fall Apart, and I'll, met, I'll butcher the name, Pema, Pema, Pema Chadron. It's, uh, 
about meditations and stuff. Mm. It's a meditation kind of, not a guidebook, but a storybook of how things, how people overcome adversity and obstacles. And one of the things understanding that is, as I read that and I reflect on it, if today's my last day, and this is the last day I'm here, God forbid something happens tonight, I'm not here tomorrow. Would it matter how many emails I responded to or, you know, how many things I got done if I just ran by all the people in my life and didn't take a moment to say I loved them or sit and reflect with them or I didn't wake up to hear the birds chirping and the sun rising again and just understand what a true blessing each day is. And that's where I've shifted is to more, because that's always true. You know what I mean? Like if you think about even switching back to the hate stuff, all the things we're hating are all man-made. They're yeah. literally all societal. Uh-huh. But if you stop and watch the sunrise and the birds chirp. Yeah. No one's ever like, man, fuck the birds. Right. The I birds the ain't pissed at you. The birds ain't arguing with each other about, you know, whose nest is bigger. <laughs> it just, it, it, for me, it just reminds me to really enjoy these moments. And I would say a challenge for our audience and our community is to really reflect for themselves what do they really enjoy and how can they bring more of that to their life. And, and, you know, some people, like, we're fortunate that we've made decisions that allow us to run our own businesses, which is good and bad. (laughs) You know, I mean, it's easy to overwhelm you with your own businesses, but it's also really good, like you said, I come in and hammer out four hours, I can be done for the day. So I encourage our community to look for what is it that you really enjoy and what, if today is your last day, what would be on your to-do list? And let's start moving that direction. You know, like I think that's one of the reasons people enjoy coming to our community and listening to you and I as we truly live our days doing what we enjoy. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean you there's not stuff I don't enjoy about part of my day or that's not my favorite, but that's not the majority of my day. Mm-hmm. So now do you have, do you use lists or power lists or anything anymore? Nothing, dude. Nothing? Like I, I was actually kind of shocking when, when I saw this episode come on. I was like, okay, let me get ready. And I went over to my computer. My calendar literally has nothing. <laughs> and, and Like when I was at the police department, my last job uh, was very project based. Like we always had projects going and deadlines to meet. So like I would have, you know, like plan this academy and it would be every day for six months until the academy started. So I knew I was always working on it and my calendar would literally be full of that. And now I look, I'm like, ah, that's a good looking calendar. What do I want to do today? But the downside is that if you're not disciplined enough to know that you got to get some stuff done, it could cause some problems for people. Yeah. And, and I would argue that you've probably had so many years of to-do lists and power lists to where now you have routines. Now you exactly. have habits. Habits for sure. So you're waking up, you're doing your morning routine, yeah. you're doing your morning rituals. It's, it's a lot of things that you don't really need to write down. But anymore. I think that's, you're right on, you're exactly right. It's no different than a diet, an exercise routine, Anything that you do repeatedly for a while becomes habit. So now I don't need necessarily all these lists. Mm -hmm. But if you're a person that is struggling to get things done, Mm -hmm. yeah, power lists are a great thing to get started. But I also don't want people to find them to be a crutch, right? And as soon as they don't have their list, they're incapable of doing. No, you're not. Like your goal, at least in my view, is it's like we talked about this, you know, community in our classes. Like I, I don't necessarily want somebody to do a power list for every day for the rest of their life. Like at some mm-hmm. point they should de- develop the habits to move past that. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's just where I'm at. Yeah. And I always like how you bring up seasons. You know, for me, I wasn't doing lists for a while, but I was what on 75 hard. Yeah. I was doing that every day. Which created structure. I was training from, which created structure. Right. But like a couple episodes ago, seasonal kind of fell off a little bit to yeah. where right now, I want the lists. They're, they're helpful to me to where even though some of these things and so with, with how I use these lists and power lists are for things that I haven't yet developed 
a strong habit of. Like yeah. for me, I don't need to put go to the gym on the list. I don't need to put eat healthy, drink water. I, I but the meditation piece for at least yeah. ten minutes, I do. The try to get yoga for twenty minutes, I do. That's not a solidified habit for me. So I think for our listeners, when you're when you're experimenting with these power lists. You know, you want to be pushing yourself. You want to put something on there that you know is going to bring you happiness and bring you closer to whatever you're looking to achieve. For me, it's it's a stronger spiritual practice, right? Clearing my mind a little bit more. That's that's one of the big that's, things for me. And that's a huge thing, right? That self-assessment of knowing and going all the way back to uh – to our out of box episode, what is it you want? Mm-hmm. Because it, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, if you don't know what you want, you can have all the lists in the world, but they might not be getting, like, where are they taking you? Mm-hmm. Right? You So know what you want. So, like, for me, I really want to enjoy relationships around me. I want to slow my days down, and I don't want to feel like I have to rush through my life anymore. Mm-hmm. So my actions lead me to that goal. Yeah. Right? But if you don't know what your goal is, how can your actions lead there? So so first step to me to have a real productive power list or any kind of planner is know what it is you want out of this. Right. If you're trying to build your business to a certain level, okay, what activities do I need to do every day to get that? And then have that stuff down. But first know what the end results, what you visualize the end result to be. Yeah. Yeah. And why you want it. So for something... Like Jared, you know, wanting wanting more time in relationships, more time in community. Maybe something on your power list that day is, I need to schedule coffee or lunch with a friend sure. I haven't talked to, or I need to call grandma, or I need to call uncle, or you know, some relationship based uh, power list things. Yeah, I like the list. So obviously, you feel that you know, at this point in your life, you don't need a to do list to yeah. win the day. Do you think somebody starting out on their journey 10, 20, 30 years younger than you would need a list to really start to develop habits? How, how effective do you think these power lists are to win the day? I don't know, man. I, I think they're effective as long as you realize they're just a tool for you. You know what I mean? And you don't let it run your life. And what I mean by that is, it's, it's kind of like the, probably the easiest analogy for me right now is social media. When somebody posts on social media and they post and then they go back and watch the results. And if the results aren't what they wanted, then it gets them down. And, and they question themselves and do I not look pretty enough? Is this not the right picture? Right? They go, go into this dark when they had nothing to do with them. Mm-hmm. Right? So if, if you have these lists just use them for what they're, they're a tool for you. They don't run your life. Just like technology doesn't run our life. Like you're in charge of it. And I, I think that's the downside to people having a list is then if something happens, like remember, you're not in control of everything. So what if something derails you on number three and that's as far as you get and you had eight things? Well, now are you beating yourself up psychologically because you had five more things you didn't get done? Or is it negative self-talk? So I, I think it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword. It can help develop habits if you keep it in its place. But if it starts to run your life and you're only happy if all this gets done, only then that's negative, right? And it doesn't get you any closer. So I, I, I think it's a balancing act. And I would just always encourage whatever's on that list Make sure there's time for you on that list. Mm -hmm. And that should be like the number one thing. So if you get time for you, exercise, fit, whatever it is you're working on, meditation, yoga, exercise, dieting, nutrition, whatever, pay yourself first and then everything else will kind of naturally take place. But I think where, where we've stumbled is we have it the opposite. Right? And that's why you see it in our, our nation's fitness and, and stuff is we prioritize all the stuff bosses want done, all the stuff everybody else wants done, and we're way at the bottom. And then inevitably, we don't get to it today. We don't get to us tomorrow. We don't get to us next week or six months or a year. Mm-hmm. And 20 years down the road, you have a body you don't recognize that can't fight. Disease, you know what I mean? Like it, it just goes that route. So I, 
I would just encourage if we have younger people that are like, okay, I need a list to develop these habits, make sure you are at the top of your list. Yeah. Because if you're not healthy, if you're not mentally well, all the other stuff does not matter in my view. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of my readings this morning, the past couple mornings. I'm reading this book. I can't remember the exact name right now. It's either The Art of Happiness or The Secret to Happiness, and uh, the Dalai Lama is on the front of it. Yeah. And it's like this PhD guy who interviewed the Dalai Lama for a while. And the Dalai Lama talks about the principles of Buddhism and how the primary purpose of Buddhism, the primary purpose of human beings is to seek happiness, is to seek out happiness. And he talks about the the differences between you know, pleasure and happiness are, are two different things. So he talks about how in order to be in a state of consistent happiness, the, the primary thing is to have a calm mind. He talks about how that's, that's kind of the primary thing, a, a calm and content yep. mind. So in our society, when we're like me, taking Adderall, trying to get a ton of things done, drinking coffee, trying to answer as many emails as we can, trying to do, 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 which is good in a calm way. But if we consistently get in this cycle, it's really hard to maintain this state of happiness because we're not calm, we're not relaxed. And that was a big eye opener for me. Interesting. Well, and not only are you not calm and relaxed, you're actually doing negative damage to your body. Right, your cortisol levels are high, you're under stress, you're stressing your heart. For what? You could literally walk away from that computer and them emails will be there. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and and trust me, I, I'm guilty of this. I remember sitting like, and you, you know, as soon as the email come up, you're like, boom, let me, oh, yep, right away. Dude, what, why? Like, why did, but we were just conditioned that way. Mm-hmm. Right? We were literally thought that that was the best way. If I can respond as fast as possible, that will make you my best customer. And we were slaves to this. And and we pay a price. We pay a price on our health, our mental well, health, our mental fitness, our spirituality. And it's funny, I think reflect on this for a second. So in this book I'm reading, the 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 last meditation was about loneliness. And all the things we truly do to escape just being lonely. And part of it was our work. Right? Part of like, like for some reason, we've gotten this idea that loneliness is bad. If you say you're lonely, people feel sorry for you. And they want to be like, oh, what can I do for you? When, and actually, loneliness is good. Because it lets you sit with your own thoughts and your own mind and reflect on your own world. But we are so quick to be distracted, right? Like, um, you know, it's talking about it. Like, if you're in a conversation, there's like a lull. The first thing you want to do is like grab your phone and see if something happened. Or you'll be watching a movie and halfway through you're on your phone. Or you're, Mm -hmm. and we just don't sit. So do you think that sometimes we have these to-do lists? to avoid those moments where we just kind of feel lonely. I think, I think some people probably do, you know, for, for me, I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think that I put things on my to-do list that I believe are going to bring me more happiness in the long run. Even if the thing on my to-do list in the moment, it may not be very happy. Like, you know, uh, a really hard workout or, whatever it is that will, that will lead me closer to happiness. Um, but no, that's, that's something interesting. That's something interesting see, I to think, think about. S- sitting in meditation can be lonely. Yeah. Right. So, so I think you're kind of addressing it, right? Through meditation, we, we learn to sit with ourselves and not feel the need to do something all the time. And I, I think, that would be a downside to people that are very, very much on a list, very much structured, is they, they're, they never have that moment with themselves. Which to me is why no matter what list you have, your health has to be number one. Mm-hmm. So just I was thinking about that the other day on loneliness and just how, how it does have a negative connotation, especially in Western society. 
Yeah. And how we like do anything to avoid being lonely. Yeah. And it's even when we are lonely, right, by ourselves, we still have our phones. We're we're still we're still connected and immersed in some sort of community, whether it be digital or yeah, a- anything. And it's starting at a much younger age now. Oh, you know, gosh. such young children are immersed in social media. You have TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, and the list goes on and on. And there's only more and more to where it can be that same thing of, yeah, maybe it's not an email, but I feel that the our youth are feeling pressure to, to show up on, on each platform, to participate, to, to be putting content out. You know, this, this, this era is, is really interesting to where it's not, especially here in Western society, it's more, we are more focused on being included, being immersed and loneliness is a negative thing. Well, we've been conditioned that way, Mm -hmm. right? We, lots of movies start out with a lonely person or, you know, the, the bad breakup, you know, I just think we're, we're just tricked into not understanding that we are capable of being by ourselves. And especially for Andrea and I with, you know, Trey now off to college and Taya hardly ever at home. I have more alone time now in my life than I've ever had because we had our kids young. You know what I mean? So most of my, like my time in your stage of life, I already had family. Mm-hmm. So there was like going to the bathroom. You weren't even alone, right? Like people yeah. were talking to you at the door. And um, <laughs> so I'm really in exploring loneliness and just being by myself a lot and trying to shift my mind that it's not a bad thing, that it can be a very productive thing and a creative thing, which kind of ties into what, what I wanted to say or, or talk about is how do you feel on the days you don't have your to-do list or you don't complete it? So on the days when I don't have to-do lists, it's more mental. Like most weekends, on the weekends, I won't, I won't have to-do lists. Maybe if I go into the office for a couple hours, like I have what I, what yeah. I need to get done. But mainly for the day, and uh, for the day I don't have a, a to do list. It doesn't feel bad or off. It's more, it's more free flowing, and I feel that I achieve most of what I put on my to do list, anyways. Yeah. When I don't achieve everything on my to do list, it depends on how much, right? If I'm at three out of five or four out of five, it's a, it's more of a like, all right, kind of get your shit together, kind of thing. If it's one or two out of five, then it's like, where the hell did my day go? And that's usually, that's usually an indication that something's up, (laughs) that something's up. But I I feel Jared that I've, I've kind of graduated from really beating myself up and being super hard for all myself. It's really, really rare that that happens. Yeah. But that's a, like you, you said, graduated to it, Mm -hmm. which means at some point that was what we were doing. Oh, for sure. Right. And I think a lot of people start that way and 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 that's when it to do list powerless whatever you call it is not good for you, mm-hmm. right? If it literally is causing you to ruin your self esteem, to talk negative to yourself, to beat yourself up because you didn't get some stuff done, mm-hmm. then we gotta look at that. But I also think how many things on your list are in your control? Most right. So that's a good to do list. But a lot of people will have things on there that they don't really control. Right. Because what if the world throws something in the middle between three and four and you never get four through eight done? Mm-hmm. Well, things came up. And, and that's why, like, for my stuff, I control it all. I control if I get up and watch the sunrise. I control if I take a minute, no matter what I'm doing, to look out the garage door from the gym while you dudes are getting water and just take a minute to let God know I appreciate the sunset. Yeah. That's all I got to do. And for you, that's what it means to win the day. It is, man. You know, like I really wanted this episode for our community to be able to identify at this point in their life, what, what does it mean for, for you to win the day? You know, because for everyone, it's going to be different. And yeah. if you can identify that, maybe you need a list, maybe you don't. If you can identify that and make sure that it's things that you can control and you can win your days consistently, 
You're going to have a better life. And make sure you know what what does that mean for you. Right? Like I think we both have very clear ideas of what does it mean to win our day. What is at the end of the day, what are we looking for? So then the activities we need to partake in lead us that direction. Mm-hmm. So make sure you know what you want the end result to be. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then keep it simple, man. I think we just, we overcomplicate so much in our life anymore. And and what happens then? You overcomplicate it. It looks difficult. It has so many steps. And then we don't do anything. Mm-hmm. And we continue to just kind of haphazardly navigate the rivers of life instead of rowing with purpose to get to where we want to be. Yeah. Yeah, there's one thing you said that I wanted to comment on about beating yourself up when you don't do it. And there was one thing that really helped me graduate to that point of not doing that anymore. And it was the fact that you can only love others to the capacity that you love yourself. For sure. So if you're constantly beating yourself and, and putting yourself down and being hard on yourself, that is a reflection of your own love for yourself. Yep. And a lot of people will say, will will claim that right of like oh like I'll, I'll i'll put others before me or you know i i i have respect for others but not respect for myself or, or whatever but that's not true you can't it's no it's it's the same it's coming from the same source that capacity of love for yourself whatever that max is out at that's the max that you can love somebody else yeah. and when i really realized that that was true i was like whoa for me to not love myself is selfish is selfish because if you are not loving yourself then you can't be out there putting out love in the world you can't be spreading love in the world so i'd i'd like to challenge our listeners if anyone's in in a space or has been in a space where they you know there's you're struggling with loving yourself you need to you need to make that your top priority that needs to be how you win your day because it starts with that your foundation for self love is the found the same foundation yeah. that love for others is built upon. And I would say, honestly, the greatest tragedy in life is to go through this journey not loving yourself. <laughs> you know? I mean, not loving your mistakes, your successes, your your shortcomings. Like, love all of it, dude. You're, you're a unique being. And when you accept that you love all the things you are, then you can make changes and continue to progress. Um... And we have plenty of episodes in the past where we offer them some tips and different things we've done to really explore who we are, what we want out of life, and to really get comfortable in our own skin. Mm-hmm. That would be a good episode. Which Love one? Yourself. Have we done one like that? Yeah, we have one called Love Yourself. Oh, shit. Well, we I need think to go so. Back Check to that, that out. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to pull it up to see. But I, yeah, and, and I, I think... This episode's perfect for where we're at in this time, but then again, I think all our episodes are perfect, so I might be biased. But if we all take individual ownership of our days, and within that days, we focus on making ourselves better, and we have some component of giving to others, we can start to overcome hate. Yep. Right? Because where does... If you think about well, how do people get to a point where they just hate so much? They don't love themselves. They don't. I think about like the all the people that we follow that, that are practitioners of inclusion and love and seeing the good in humanity. Gandhi, Dalai Lama, Martin Luther King Jr., Gabon, we'll go on and on, Mother Teresa. They all love themselves first. Because if I hate myself it's easy to start hating everything else and to always look why i should hate everything else so start on your to-do list your power list you know if you have good habits and you're looking to move you already feel you're where you want to be you're just adding to it have a different set of circumstances on your left or a di- different set of uh goals if you're just getting going and we need to start loving ourselves let's Go back to that episode, love yourself, get some strategies going, and let's start moving forward because love will beat hate all the time. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and know, know where you're at, right? If, if you've never done power lists, if you're just getting started on, on your journey of personal development, put put some simple things on there. Maybe start with three, you know, start small that, that you know you can start racking up some wins. If you're further along your personal development journey and, and you know, you're doing really well, you already have established habits, then you need to push yourself. Don't just put... Don't just put some little check marks on some easy things that you're already doing. Push yourself, really, really ask yourself, whatever it is, however your style is, journal, mirror talk, whatever it is, have some self reflection exercises and identify what goals you're moving towards and make sure that your power list reflect that. Because if you're winning, if you're winning those days, then after a few weeks, after a few months, you're going to be hitting these short term goals. You're going to be hitting these long term goals and you're going to be happier with who you are, with how your life is. And with what you bring to the world. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the the biggest things we're all searching for now is how can I make the world better? Yeah. And you make the world better by making you better and then showing up. Yeah, we have enough hate and arguments and all that. Think about what can you bring that's unique and helpful and productive. But it starts with you, right? What kind of practice do we have for him today, Ali? Purposeful practice this week starts with identifying what are three to five daily habits you want in your life that you will be happy doing. Part two is what does a great day look like to you if you got to design your perfect schedule? And then email your practice to onpurpose.official at gmail.com. Yeah, I like that last one because that was uh, Andrea and I did that probably four or five years ago. We sat down and did a perfect day exercise, and we each wrote down like five things that need to happen to have a perfect day. Mm. And I literally get to live it every day now. Nice. That doesn't mean everything's perfect. Right. But it means this is the kind of day I dreamt of, which is a good mind shift, right? So if a problem comes up, but it fits with, with the day I've always wanted, then it's a good problem. Yeah. So get out to do your purposeful practice. Uh, join us on Patreon. Uh, the communities continue to grow. We are so appreciative of everybody there. And uh, good stuff, Ollie. Good stuff, Jared. Thank you. All right, team, as we wrap up another episode of the On Purpose podcast, we are thankful for having you all on our journey. We want to announce new ways to include you and let you go deeper into our community. First off, we've got the onpurposepodcast.com website where you can subscribe to our monthly newsletter, get inside tips, and see what's coming up in the upcoming months, as well as our new launch is our Patreon account. We have five tiers where you can decide at what level you want to contribute to the podcast and the community, help support us, continue to push us forward and grow. And it's as little as 50 cents an episode or $2 a month all the way up to 50 bucks a month, depending on and where you want to be. Perks of this are sneak peek uh, episodes. You get the episodes quicker. You get to contribute on episodes. You get monthly Q&As with Ali and I and special guests. And you get to be a building block for our community as we continue to grow worldwide with the release of Shelly Davies episode we are now international and we're excited for the future leads us so please fit in with us wherever you are comfortable and remember team life is far too short to live any other way than on purpose we'll see you next week